Hi, I am Lorraine Watry and this is my YouTube channel and I have been working on a water lily to finish it up and because of how long the videos ended up being I decided to split them into uh, smaller videos and make a series out of this and so uh, what you will be watching next is the next part of the series and if you haven't watched the first one or the ones in the series I will try to link those as I go along and uh, I will see you in the next one if there is one or thank you for watching if there isn't one. Thanks and have a good day. And I can narrow that just a touch. Whoops. So if you go over an edge like I just did, it's better to leave it alone, let it dry, and then come back and um, then you can lift that. So right now this is so wet that if I put water near that edge, the color is going to want to move wherever I've placed water. So it's better just to leave it alone and come back later. Um, there is a shadow up here as well, but that's close to that shadow. So I better not do that one. This one needs more color. And it has a little bit of a peachy look right up in this upper edge. And then as it comes down, it goes pinker and then uh, into the darker value and purple, purple pink. So I'll go ahead and bring that all the way down, I'm trying to clean up any edges that uh, may have been slightly misshapen. So you can do that with your brush as well and, and the paint, or you can um, do that with a flat brush and clean, clean it up with some water. Okay, so this should be dry. It is. And I am going to put a little water up on this upper part of the petal and come into my Burnt Sienna with the Quin Rose and just sort of let it blur into that water. Now that left an edge, which I don't want. So I dried my brush, cleaned it and dried it. And then I'm just going to use that damp brush to kind of pull at that edge a little bit. And on the very edge, it's like the other side. It's just a little darker right here. So I'm going to add that because that will help separate it from the water lily pad below it. And just a little more right, right in there. Okay. Now I have an edge here where I need to just come in with my flat brush and some water and just taking that around that edge to bear ever so gently and just kind of waking up the edge just a touch, I can clean that edge a little bit. It's just got a little um, of the shadow on that edge and I don't want it there. Oh, I forgot this was slightly damp still, so I need to be careful. Um, when we did this uh, lily, we were trying to work quickly and uh, we did not mask the lily like I normally do. So uh, we painted around in parts the pads behind the petals. And so there are edges in here that if I had uh, masked this off with my masking tape like I normally do, or with even masking fluid, uh, they might be uh, possibly cleaner, but um, because we were trying to get through a lot, we didn't do that for this one. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to put in the inside of this one first, and then I'll come do the outside edge because it does need more color on it. It's very pale right now, and a little bit of yellow. Then it's slightly peach, so I just went and picked up some of the rose. 
and then toward the bottom it's not a lot darker there is a dark shadow that comes across it and that has hard edges but we'll just get a little more of the rose on there and this is uh, lighter in the middle okay This shadow may need to go darker, but for now, I'll leave it. That's dry enough. And I need to clean up my cobalt because I've got all kinds of things going on over there. And this shadow feels a little cooler than some of the others, so I I think, I, yeah, I have a little more of the cobalt in the mix. That might be a little much. Get some of the rose. And I need to watch my edge here. Now it's just a touch dark. I'm going to take just a little more off. Your watercolor will dry 20 to 30% lighter than uh, what it is when you put it on your paper. So uh, just be aware that if it looks okay when, or it looks good when you put it down value wise, um, it's going to lighten. So it will probably not be what you want. So in general, uh, you want to have it feel a little dark when you're placing it down on your paper for it to dry to the correct value. All right, so there's a darker edge that's kind of muted right in here. And I will come back and soften with some water. And it sort of goes up. got an unusual uh, shadow, something that's creating an interesting shadow on it. And then I'm just going to soften parts of that. So I, I want part of it to be hard edged and then other parts to just kind of fade. All right, so I'm going to do that same thing over on this one. It has um, shadow right in here kind of goes around the little tip of that petal and then it has a shadow that sort of comes down right into here that edge is a little darker and then I'm going to fade brush is a little too wet some of those edges And this left side has a hard edge shadow right there. And then there is a little more color. I think I just drew on my paper. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. So just a little color right in here. Okay, so those have a little more form to them. Um, I'm going to go pick up, there's a little bit of darker value there that I accidentally went over my light um, outside edge. So just using that flat brush, I can go back and soften that edge a little and then I just dab with my cloth. And that'll clean it up just a little. Okay, so I did mention earlier that this light value right here may be too strong, but I need to get uh, that outside edge of that petal in first. And 
to know if I want to put any color on the light area. So I'm going to use my new gamboge and my cobalt and make sort of an olive -y mix. And I'm going to start with that because I see a lighter uh, kind of olive -y color right in here. And then it gets uh, darker and it has some red in it. So I'm using all three of my pigments now. I've got my new gamboge, my cobalt, and I've come over and picked up some of the rose. And it will give you a muted um, mix, depending on how much you have of each color in there. Because basically, if we make a green and then we put red with it, we're using complementary colors. Know if this is dark enough, but it will get it started. Okay, so I'll leave that for now and then I can come back to that. Um, I think I'll go to this petal because I haven't done anything on the inside yet. Now, depending on what I'm working on, sometimes I will have big, huge pools of color out. Right now, I don't need that much because I'm working on little individual areas and um, not quite getting this one. I am just glazing or putting layers on and just adding a little bit of color here and there. So I'm fine if I have to mix up more color and like I had mentioned earlier, it doesn't have to be exactly what I had before. So it really can depend on what I'm painting. And also this is a very small painting, so I don't need huge um, areas of color to work on it. But I do have a lot of pigment in my wells, and that is so that when I want a dark value, I can go and get a lot of color out without much effort. And the paint on my palette is mostly Daniel Smith watercolor, and then I have maybe four to six Holbein. And the Daniel Smith pigments re-wet very easily, so I don't have to pre-wet them, and I can just get out a lot of color, so it's um, very easy to work with them and I um, prefer not to ha get fresh color out all the time. I know there are some brands that they suggest that you do that, but I like using pa paint that is somewhat, well, that is dry, generally, unless I've been painting recently, um, and then I just add a little water to moisten it when I'm going to work with it. All right, so I'm going to go back to those yellow petals. And I want to put a little more color up in here. Maybe a little more behind as well. Some of my edges are sort of blurring together there a little. I have a shadow that still needs to go in on one of the yellow petals over here. It's really kind of hard to have um, a yellow shape and place a muted kind of 
purpley color on top of it. I mean, it will look right in the end when I step back, but when you're up close to it, sometimes it's like, oh, I don't know if that's the right color because yellow can be one of the hardest colors to shadow. And I am not touching what I just did as long as I stay back from the edge just a little bit. But I wanted to add just a touch of a peachy color on this one because I was seeing a little bit of that. And then I think I'm going to add a very pale little bit of purple up in here. And this is vibrant, this is not muted because I've already got a muted passage of color on there for the shadow. So I'm just carefully adjusting that color just a touch. And I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow right here because I want that to glow. So I think you can see that sometimes it's just little changes that can make a difference. Now I don't know if, if you can tell that on the video for this, but uh, it did um, that little bit of yellow right there is nice. It looks like it's helping. Okay, going into this petal back in here. Haven't put anything on the middle of it yet. Need a little more color. So in general for yellow, you can shadow with a purple depending on what color your yellow is and how dark it is. You can shadow with um, orange and you can also shadow with green. Um, and you know you kind of have to look at your image and see if you can see any of those colors on the shapes if you're working with yellow. I'm going to take just a touch of my rose and add it to this middle. Get just a little more color down in here. So that center is a little stronger. Um, okay, that's dry. So I'm going to go back to this uh, back right and I think I'll put the shadow on and then if I decide later I need a little more color on there I can do that. Oops, some more rose. And this shadow, um, oops, I have a line there that I don't need. Um, has a hard edge on the left, and then it sort of fades on the right, and it's a little more pink down here in the bottom. So I did go pick up some rose because I was out. And I'll just soften this edge just a little. And I dried my towel so my brush is not too wet. And the left side, I see a little of the rose right on the edge. And then it sort of just kind of fades down into the middle. So I'm going to use some water on my brush to sort of pull at that color I just put on so that it softens it. Okay, I'm going to go down here. Actually, yeah, it's dry enough. So I pulled out some rose and I probably could put some cobalt in there, but I just chose not to. Okay. And 
And I said I was going to come back into this outside part of the uh, petal and so I went and picked up more of my green that's very olivey looking and there's a little bit of kind of rose, dark rose on this tip right into the green. I'm seeing a little bit of darker value right here. I've got some mask right next to it so later on I might have to adjust right in there. And because I don't want it as dark as the shadow that I've got down on my paper below it, I am not going to darken this maybe as dark as I'm seeing it, but I do want it darker so that it will not be too strong right there, but also it will create the side of that petal. Okay, that's better. I feel like this kind of lost some of the rusty color when I came in with the water. It took up a little bit too much of the color. So I'm just going to pull that out. Oh, I see an edge I need to clean. So right here, I had some color come over when I was working on that shadow to the left. So I thought there was, oh, yeah, where was it? There was something else I said I was going to get later. It might have been right here. Your flat brush does need a little water on it. If it is too dry, you're not going to be able to do anything. Okay. Uh, there is some shadow back in here. This uh, edge right here is way too light. Maybe not way too light, but it is too light. So I'm going to add a touch of color right there. Okay. So I am going to go up to this petal right here and Looking at the image, a portion of it is uh, somewhat shadowed, and then there is a, a piece of it on the lower part that is um, overlapping another petal, so it has more pink in that area. And so I think I'll put the pink in first. So my Quinn Rose, and turn it about up in here. And then it does seem to be a little lighter toward the lower section. And I know I just mentioned a little bit ago that a lot of the time your petals will have um, a darker value toward the middle, but sometimes you'll have glow coming through the petals and so it can create different scenarios. Okay, I'll leave that. Uh, I think I'll come to the outside of this petal because I can tell it's way too light. And I think I do have a tiny bit of color on there. I don't think it's just white right now, but it really looks like it. And so I've got my two yellows on my brush. And I will be, this is on dry paper, and I will be leaving some little highlights here and there, but just kind of painting around them. Because um, I see a texture on the outside edge and if I were 
painting a bigger water lily, then I might try to zoom in if I had my painting or my painting, my photo or a photo on my computer, then I could zoom in and get an idea of that texture a little bit better. But uh, sometimes it's just kind of tricking the viewer's eye to um, create something that might make it look textured just by changing color or leaving highlighted areas. And so that's what I'm doing. Okay, so I used the yellow, then I had some pink in here, and then I went and picked up a little bit of purple. So it's got just a little bit of texture going on in there. Change of color and texture. Um, this petal over here, actually I can't touch that one because I just did that one. You guys are probably yelling at me, don't do that. Okay, so I'll go to this outside petal. And it does already have just a little bit of yellow in there. That's not quite it. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow with the purple. And it definitely is lighter than the inside, but I had this too light. So I need to darken it and then I will need to also darken the inside of the petal. So I'm using a little bit of purple and then there's some texture down in here. So just leaving some of the earlier layer peeking through. And then I'm going to go add some pink down in here. Maybe I'll use a touch of pink. So again, that was painted wet on dry. So dry paper and Again, I will have to come back in and darken that middle just a touch more. All right, so I'll come back to this side because I have to wait for some of those things to dry. And some of these are, I could put a little bit of shadow on that one. So as I move along and start building things and working around either a flower or whatever it is that I'm painting, I start to get to the point where I am doing finishing things. So for this water lily, it's getting to the point where I'm just checking to see one, if my values are dark enough and adjusting those if I need to. And then I'm also seeing if I've missed anything on any of these petals. So I'm darkening the shadow there and I'll use a little water to blur the edge. And this one has some texture on it. It's not a lot of texture, but I'm going to add a little. So I'm using some water to give me a little bit of a wet on wet. And then just picking up a touch of my slightly muted mix so it's the purple and the yellow and I'll just dot it in a little bit here and there and then that will give me a little texture on that petal just a touch of the pink whoops touch that's not a touch <laughs> that's a lot more all right blur this just a little Okay. And if you touch your paper when it's when you're doing wet on wet, if the color moves a lot, then you either need to have less water uh, in your mix or you need to dry your brush, usually the back edge if you've already got color on there, or give it just a little bit longer so that uh, water that you've placed on the surface will dry some. Okay, so um, right now I'm pretty happy. I think I'm going to put just a little bit, I was noticing just then, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow right 
in here because that was a little bright. I'm actually okay with some of these edges being um, maybe a little lighter than what the photo is showing me, uh, but because I want to have that stronger highlight, I don't want this one to be as strong. Okay, so let's see. I can go back to this first one that I did and it's um, it's a shadow with some texture. This is on dry paper, so I'm going to leave some openings here and there. And then as I come down the shape, I am going back and picking up just a little more blue on my brush to have it be a little cooler. And I've got an overlap that I don't want to have, but I'm going to wait and I'll come back and fix that. Notice the screen was just a little dark, or my video was just a little dark, so I went and adjusted that. Um, so I do have a shadow back on this petal to the left of that one that I need to darken, and uh, I need to add, I'm going to get some more Quinn Rose out. There is a new, actually I don't know if it's new, but it's new to me. Um, pigment by Daniel Smith that's called Quinn Pink. And I could have used some of that in here, but we started with the Quinn Rose, and so I just stuck with it. And uh, it was a common color that we both had, so it's, um, it's a good pink or rose color but it would be interesting to see the difference with uh, adding some of that Quinn pink also. All right, so then this petal needs some shadowing, a little bit of a darker layer here and there, and took some of that rose off of my brush with my towel, and I went and picked up a little bit of cobalt as well because it does change and go a little more purple in a couple areas. And then I still need to darken the interior of this one, but I have to wait on that now. I think I will go up here. Actually, let me see if I can adjust that edge. So going to get a smaller brush and then I don't want either edge to be shiny or really wet and they are drying pretty quick. So then I'm just going to go over that edge where I overlapped my color a little too much or it, at all because I don't really want it to overlap there and see if I can just lift very gently that darker layer. All right, so um, I'm going to dry this right quick and then I will continue. So I think at the kind of the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I don't use the dryer very often. Um, most of the time when I pick up a dryer, it's because I want to finish an area and that's needed in order to come back into the area because I don't have anywhere else to work at that point and so that's where I was with this. All right so I'm just darkening that right down in there just a little more. Whoops. Didn't mean to clink so loudly. Okay and then this is just cobalt and rose, although there may be a little bit of yellow in there. I think I do want just a touch because I've got kind of a mix of colors happening on the palette. All 
and then I'm going to use my brush to soften the right edge. And because this is a small brush, it doesn't hold a lot of water, so um, it's less likely to... There is just a tiny bit. Let me rough myself here. There's a tiny bit of pink right along that shadow line. So I'm going to add that. And again, if that weren't there, I doubt anyone would know, but since I was seeing it, I would put it on. I have it, part of it is because when when you paint a lot, you you'll start to see variations in color, or you just get your own style where um, you like creating those variations. And so I tend to see a lot of changes and color variations now that I probably didn't see when I was first painting. Um, and as you paint more and, and really look at objects and things like that more, then some of those things will start to stand out. Okay. All right, so uh, one more time with the dryer and I'll be right back. By the way, um, the dryer that I use now is called a Heat It Craft Tool by Ranger. And um, I don't know that it necessarily dries any better than a regular dryer, but it is very small and it's very quiet. And so when I'm teaching, it's really nice to have because I can talk while I'm drying. And then also if I'm traveling to teach a workshop, it's uh, very small to pack. Um, the, it is actually a heat gun, but it's not as hot as some heat guns, so I can have my hand within maybe eight inches or so. It starts to get hot after a little bit, but it's not awful, and uh, I wouldn't want to sit there for a really long time, but it, you know, it's fine. Um, you can use it with masking fluid. I still have masking fluid on my paper. I also use hair dryers with masking fluid, um, so any of these uh, kind of tan looking areas, those are, still have mask on them. We did remove the mask up in here and adjusted the edge, um, but the other areas we have not removed the mask yet. So uh, when you're using it with masking fluid on your painting though, whether it's a dryer or this, always keep it moving rather than just point it at one spot. Um, and also I don't have it really close to the paper. So in general, I've got it maybe eight to 10 inches away from the paper and I'm moving it around. Um, and these, the supplies I use, this um, heating tool and other things, uh, I have a link on my website that uh, is, shows um, different tools I use through Amazon and I it, that is an affiliate link. So I do get a little bit back. It doesn't cost you anymore, but I get a little bit back if you purchase something through there. Um, no worries if you don't, if you're not on Amazon or any of that, you know, I just wanted to mention that. Um, okay, so I have an edge that is not quite right, right here. And this is very minuscule, so it's probably not that noticeable, but I felt like that corner right there was um, it wasn't overlapping right. So I'll let that dry and then I'll come back to it. And also the lily pad that's back here, I actually need to bring my green in just a touch right in here, but I need to darken this anyway, so I'm going to wait on that. Uh, I'm going to come into this pink area and now I can place color on and then come back and soften edges but I'm just going to place some water in there so that when I place my paint on it, it will just kind of randomly catch the water and create soft edges here and there. So sometimes I will put the water on and soften an edge after I've placed the color on, on the area. And then sometimes I will do this where I let the water sort of help me paint the shape so that I end up with hard and soft edges 
and um, just makes it a little more random. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit right here. Need a little darker value right in there. So now I'm sort of getting down, well, I am getting down to some of the last marks on the lily. And I still need to finish the inside of that. I'll give that just a second because I was painting near it. And I want to go on this side and darken that shadow. Now the upper edge is not quite as dark. I probably should have placed some water down here first, but I'll come in with some water right quick. The problem with doing it after I've placed the paint paint on there is that if I wet this area right there and use too much water, I could cause a bloom. And I am seeing just a touch of pink on this edge. So I'm wetting the petal and then right along the edge, I'm going to come and add a little pink to that shadow. So even though these shadows were pretty muted when we started, I have over time adjusted them a little bit so there's a touch more color in them. Okay, and I need to clean up an edge and then I can do the inside of this petal. So I had a mark that came over the edge. Again, very minimal, probably not going to be noticed. We as the artists tend to notice things about our own paintings more than others probably do. But if it's something that's bugging you, sometimes you just have to go in and adjust or take care of it even if others might not notice. You just have to, with watercolor, choose the right time to do that. Because if you touch it at the wrong time, that's where you can get into trouble and cause issues. Okay, so a little bit of texture in there, darkened the color some. Now some of these petals do tend to kind of blur together a little bit because they're close in value. Um, I'm going to add a little color behind that petal and bring that up just a little bit so that that will maybe make those separate a little more. And I'm softening the edges a little. And then on this area right back here, I want to add a little color too. Just a touch. Same thing right here. Okay, so now I'm going to dry this right quick. There may be a few more things that I want to adjust the value for, but um, one, I want to step back from it, look at it for a little while, decide if I need to make anything darker. And uh, before I would make that decision, I need to get some of the values around here. Um, Painting those for one, but also that darker value can help me decide what I, if I need to do anything more on the lily itself. So I'm going to dry it and then I will come back and we'll start on some of the lily pads. I am going to turn the painting because it'll be easier for me to work this direction. Um, I could possibly turn it this way, but then I'm having to work up into those little shapes. So I'm going to turn it this way. And because we've already removed the mask from here, then I will have to be careful. Uh, I can paint right up to the edges, even though we softened this because later I could come back and soften those edges again. 
um, but I know that I want to go darker with the value around the lily itself. And that will help make that lily feel lighter, sunlit. Um, it'll give depth to the painting. So uh, even though we have some color there, it was always my intention to go back and add color to it. So I'm going to clean just a little space to make sure that I'm using the colors that I want to in this area, which I'm going to get out um, ultramarine blue and some new gamboge is what we used. And the reason I'm using ultramarine blue and not the cobalt that I've used already is because ultramarine will go darker than cobalt. Cobalt will never be as dark and that is due to its inherent value. So if you look up inherent value of paint or watercolors, um, in general, every color, or, or this may be inherent value of a color, um, yellows will never go as dark as blues, that kind of thing. So part of color theory. All right, so I'm pulling out my ultramarine blue light. This is one of my Hansa, or my Hansa, my Holbein colors. And I'm getting out a decent sized pool. I'm not using a lot of water because I want this to be a dark value. Let me get this set up on the screen so you can actually see what the heck I'm doing. And I'm going to get new gamboge. And I should have pulled the yellow out first. Yep, I didn't quite clean my brush, so now I'm gonna have a little green. <laughs> My new gamboge is going to be a little muddy looking as I pull it out, but that's okay because it's going to kind of disappear into my mix anyway. Okay, so I have those ready. Um, I can wet this. Um, so if I'm doing an area where I feel like it's going to be hard to get around the shape, then I often will wet things. Um, because in this situation, I want to try to keep it semi-dark. Um, it really kind of is up to you whenever you're doing something like this. If you feel like it gives you more time to get around a shape, then wetting it um, beforehand is a good idea. If you feel like you want to um, try it on dry paper, then it's more about moving with some speed and watching your edges. So I am going to Actually, I want a little brighter green up in here just to have a little variety. And I will not worry about this lighter shape. I'm going to paint around it and then I will have to come back later and soften my edges. So right now it's going to look kind of funky because it's going to be hard edged. And that is a highlight that's on the petal. And I, I could come back and put a little bit of color in there. So now I've got a couple edges going. I've got this one and this one. So I'm going to load this one up with some paint. I'm just going to put a little dab of paint in there and then I'm going back to my pigment because I want some ultramarine in the mix, not just that yellow. Now this is definitely going to be darker. I will not want it to be darker than this and I don't necessarily even have to paint the whole um, lily pad again. I could use some clear water. So let me get around this petal just a little bit and maybe which I'll pull this down a little bit too. Just come right up into here. Okay, so maybe right here I want it to be a little lighter, have a highlight feel to it slightly. Um, so I can just go in and pull some clear water, put that on my brush, and paint with that for a second. It's not going to be a lot lighter, but it will give uh, just a little bit less pigment right in that area. And then it would depend on how my paint moves as well. So as long as I just keep moving around my shape and watching my edges, so I have to go around this blue, and this is a little bit of water that's on that water lily pad, and um, 
it will need a highlight lifted from it later. Okay. So come in and this is my, I think this is, yeah, this is my number 16 brush. So I'm trying to be really careful around the petals so that of the flower so that I don't mess them up. And then as I come down here, I want to paint sort of at an angle because the lily pad has um, kind of lines that radiate from the center. Now I mentioned earlier that I want to fix that little point. And this brush is, even though it's a big brush, it's got enough um, of a point to it that I can come into little places like that. Now this edge, all of these little edges are going to be drying, so I'm going to just kind of combine them to make a bigger shape. And uh, then I'm going to go pick up some water, like I mentioned earlier. I'm cleaning my brush a little more this time so I don't have a lot of color on it. And there was a lighter area on this petal right kind of where I placed the water. That's why I did that. And then I switched and picked up almost pure New Gamboge. It probably has a little bit of the ultramarine in there. Now I can rotate the painting, but I need to keep it tipped the same direction. So right now my board is over here and uh, it's tipped so that all the color is moving to that right side. And so now you can see how much that darker value really can make that water lily um, stand out. And I'm going to let it dry and then I can adjust some edges in there.